supposed to be spring. It's a winter wonderland, and, but it's not winter, it's spring. Good morning. <laughs> oh, forgot. Well, good morning from Calvary Assembly in beautiful, uh, snowy Alliance, Nebraska. And I want to especially welcome my Calvary Assembly family, as well as our friends and guests that are watching us from all over the place. So it's crazy out here. Our world definitely looking more like Coronaville, but it hasn't got close to us yet. Well, it's four or five counties away. We're glad and thankful for that, and we are praying and praying for you and trusting God is going to help our nation, and we're going to be able to see this. Uh, we're going to survive this. We're going to thrive in this. So. Um, I wanted to say um, one announcement. Um, Easter is going to be different. Uh, we're going to actually have, we're doing a community Easter service at the High Plains Drive-In. So that's going to be uh, four, at least four churches are combining to do this. And uh, we're going to have a combined worship band. Everybody's going to be able to drive up in their cars and tune in on their FM radio. So isn't that cool? So I really appreciate uh, Pastor Gary and Shirley Belk are the ones that came up with this, and uh, we're putting it all together. So this morning, I wanted to um, say one thing before I speak, and that is I really want you guys to realize that, that pastors like me, and including me, we really take a lot of time to pray and seek the Lord before we, before we preach a message. And so I pray that you really take the time to really uh, clear out distractions and, and uh, really sit down and listen to what the Lord is speaking through us, okay? Whether it's me or another uh, brother or sister in the Lord that's preaching the word of the Lord today. So I encourage you to do that. And I know the Lord will minister to you as you set apart time to really listen to Him, okay? So this morning I want to talk about um, the Lamb of God, Jesus the Lamb of God, and the fact that we have been ransomed from futility. So, um, you know, Easter is just a couple weeks away. And um, Easter is really primarily about Jesus being raised from the dead. But, you know, I get really frustrated because Easter, we, we come up on Easter so fast. And then Jesus raised from the dead and it's, and it's like Easter's over. And I feel like it's really important that we um, have a chance to precede Easter by really meditating on what Jesus did in his life, his suffering on the cross for us, before we can really appreciate what Easter means. Now, Resurrection Day, that's all about Jesus being the Lion. You know, he's called the Lion of Judah. And here's my lion this morning. I borrowed the lion from my, my friend Emily, and um, the lions, lions are powerful kings, and they're powerful killers, they're fierce, and their foes are afraid of them, they're intimidating to their foes, and, and as a lion, Jesus overcame his enemies, he overcame Satan, he overcame death and the grave, and, and really Jesus is typified in the resurrection as the lion. But before we can understand the lion and receive him, because lions are very intimidating, except when by their children. When children, the children of a lion, they don't see him as fearsome. They see him as a big loving father. You know, kind of like Aslan in the C.S. Lewis stories, the, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So, but for a lot of us, we don't see Jesus yet. We don't understand him as the lion unless we see and understand him first as the lamb. And this is from my friend Charlotte. Isn't this lamb adorable? I love this lamb. So we have to receive Jesus as our lamb, as our sacrifice, before we can really receive and understand him as a lion. I can imagine Jesus coming to life on that Easter morning and roaring as he left the tomb. So but let's take a look at um, a passage in 1 Peter that talks about Jesus as our lamb this morning. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 through 23, I want, you to, re I want to read this. If 
you have a Bible or a phone with a, a Bible app, you can read along with me. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Peter says, you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life that you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But now in these last days, he's been revealed for your sake. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God. And you have placed your hope, your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead. And gave him great glory. There's our line. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. So now you must show sincere love to each other as brothers and sisters. Love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of God. And that is the good news, he says in verse 25, that was preached to you. Just let that soak in for a moment. Isn't that amazing? So much is said there. In these brief paragraphs, Peter condenses what the good news is and what Easter really is all about. This morning I want to um, unpack uh, just a couple things, and next week I'm going to follow that up. Uh, with a couple more thoughts out of this passage. These really will help us appreciate what God has done for us. Uh, back in November, there was a, a man named um, Sean King who was released. He was, a, he was a, a, a hostage, held hostage in Afghanistan. And he was released in November. And... Um, I was thinking about his life because Sean probably didn't appreciate his freedom that much until he was taken captive by those terrorists, those, those people in Afghanistan, and held there for a long time. Can you imagine how he felt when he was released? Can you imagine how good freedom felt? Well, in the same way, we don't really appreciate what Jesus has done or really understand what Jesus has done for us in the resurrection until we understand what our life is like and what it cost him and what the cross is really all about. We can't appreciate him being the lion until we understand what the lamb is all about. So today I want to talk about, just from verse 18, uh, the fact that God has ransomed you and me from an empty life. Okay? To ransom means to pay a price, a costly price, to someone who, for someone who is valued and that is being held captive in order to secure their freedom, okay? So they, they have to be a person of value to the person that pays the ransom. They have to be held captive and the only way they can get that person back and get their freedom to them is to pay a very expensive price, okay? So we really, from this passage, this verse, we have to ask two questions. Am I really a captive, first of all? And secondly, is my, was my life, is my life really empty? So let's look at that. Both my experience and the Bible say yes, that those things are true. So let's first of all look at this question, am I really a captive who's been ransomed? If I'm a believer in Jesus. First of all, in Luke, we see that Jesus tells us that the whole world was a captive, was actually under the control of not God, not directly, but anyway, but by under the control of the enemy, under Satan's control. In Luke 4, verses 5 and 6, Jesus is being tempted by the devil, and the devil says, Hey, if you'll bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world 
because they are mine to give to anyone I please. Wow, does that blow your sockets out like mine? Jesus is, it's, Luke is recording this, Jesus basically didn't disagree with that because it was true. When Adam and Eve sinned, they actually turned over the title deed of the world to the enemy. But Jesus came to take it back at the cross and through the resurrection. So who owned all the kingdoms of the world until Jesus came? Actually, Satan did. That doesn't mean God is powerless. He was at work, but it would cost him a huge price to get back his kids. An example of this is in Luke 13, where Jesus saw a woman who'd been crippled by an evil spirit for 18 years. She'd been bent over double and couldn't straighten up. Have you ever seen somebody that their back was so bad that they couldn't stand up straight? I've seen a number of people that way over the years, and it just looks painful to me when I see somebody like that, because I know that they're, they're, it's got to be a horrible thing for them. Jesus said in verse 16 that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, has been held in bondage by Satan for 18 years. And shouldn't she, isn't it right that she be released? And she was. Jesus released her and she was instantly healed and was able to stand up straight. So we see the enemy there, he was exerting his control in the, in the life of this woman. It's just one example. So what about after the cross? Was, was Satan still having power in our world? Well, in Ephesians chapter 2, Paul tells us that we were once dead because of our disobedience and many sins. We used to, he says, we used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. Did you hear me? Obeying the devil, who's called the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. So when you are not walking with God in obedience, in a relationship with God, whose control are you under? I'll give you a clue. You're not under your own control. You're not really calling the shots. It may feel like it, but you are under the enemy's influence. And that's now, after the cross and the resurrection. Only those who have given themselves to follow and make Jesus their king can break that power and not be under the enemy's influence. Paul adds in 2 Timothy 2, 25 and 26, that about people who oppose the truth, that God's desire is to change their hearts and that they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. For they've been held captive by him, he says, to do whatever Satan wants. Did you, did you ever realize that when you were not walking with God, when you didn't know Jesus, that you were basically in captive? You were a captive and you were a slave to Satan's desires. Man, that's a horrible thing. And you know what? I experienced that in my life. I've, I've talked to our congregation so many times sharing that when I was a young man, I had a horrible pornography addiction. And my mind was a sewer. My imagination was so gross. I had nothing but nightmares all the time, too. And it was a horrendous bondage. And I cried out to God. And when I gave my life to Jesus uh, in my dorm room when I was a freshman in college, I cried out to God and said, God, if you can save me, I'm so miserable. I am depressed. I am lost. I know I'm going to hell. And when I cried out to the Lord, you know what happened? I, as I confessed my sins, the weight just lifted off of me. And I woke up two weeks later and realized I had not had a pornog pornographic dream. I hadn't had any kind of temptations in that area. It was just an amazing thing. The Lord brought freedom to me in my life. So what about your story? What, when you look back behind you, is there things that you are ashamed of? Are there things there that you need to be ransomed from or you were ransomed from by Jesus, the Lamb of God? Has this Lamb been your sacrifice so that you could be free from torment and free from sin? 
It's an amazing thing to be forgiven and to feel clean and pure. For all of us who receive what Jesus did at the cross, we are ransomed. We are free. Peter says in, in verse 19, it was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. And in Revelation 5, 9, John adds, you, Jesus, were slaughtered and your blood has ransomed people from God, for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. That's every part of this globe. Did you know there's a people of God in every nation and every ethnic group on the planet? That's an amazing thing, and it's growing too. So a lamb was sacrificed for you and me. His name is Jesus. Why don't we just stop for a second and give him thanks. Lord, thank you so much for giving me your life, spilling your precious blood that I can be free, that I could be ransomed back and out of the enemy's control and know the living God who created me to experience and walk in true freedom. Thank you, Jesus. All right, secondly, we've been saved, not only have we been ransomed, but we've been saved from an empty life which we inherited from our ancestors. That's verse, the end of verse 18. Life without Jesus is empty. It's meaningless. It's futile. You know, there's bits and pieces of it that we run after where we can find some temporary meaning, but in overall our life, we cannot make sense out of it without our Creator giving us the meaning that He created for us to have. Solomon is a great example of this. He was the richest king, the richest man on the earth in his day. And even then, with everything, he could, he, he could have anything he wanted. Even then, we read in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1, he said, I said to myself, come on, let's try pleasure. Let's look for the good things of life. But I found that this too was meaningless. Then he tried to fill his life with other things, with, with wealth. And um, he says in Ecclesiastes 5, verses 10 and 15, how meaningless to think that wealth brings true happiness. We all come to the end of our lives as naked and empty-handed as on the day we were born. We can't take our riches with us. <laughs> wow, isn't that amazing? You know, I was talking to my friend John the other day, and he reminded me that they did a, they did a survey or some research on people that won lotteries. And you know that the average period of time when someone wins millions of dollars in a lottery before they have spent all the money and are now broke and miserable again is five years. Can you believe that? Five years. But it's really, it's just basically reflecting what the Bible tells us. That wealth, pleasures, sin, everything that the world offers does not give us meaning. We are still empty inside. As we've been told many times, there's a, there's a space created inside of our heart that only God can fill. I tried to find my security through wealth many times before I really started submitting and following Jesus. And um, I remember starting a business called Integrity Maintenance and Snow Removal back in 1984. And I remember being so freaked out when I started this business because I was terrified I wasn't going to make enough money. And I remember finally one day coming to the end of myself realizing, you know what? I can't do this. I can't carry that weight. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to give this to God. And, and when I did that, I found an amazing peace and I was able to finally see that business flourish and do well, but I realized that I had given it all to God, and no longer was I the one that had to be the success and had to make the money I trusted God. And He really took care of us. My story now is the same one that the Apostle Paul talks about in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. Paul says, The things that I thought were valuable, I now consider worthless. Because of what Jesus has done in my life. Worthless. Now I consider everything else worthless. Compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have trashed everything else. 
counting it all garbage so that I could get more of Christ and experience life with Him. Wow. How about you this morning? Is that your story? Have you really realized that you have been ransomed from a meaningless life? How deep has this really gotten sunk? Is it sunk? Is it sinking in to you? Do you really understand that? You know, um, I've read some stories about child survivors of the Holocaust that when they meet, when they grow up first, they really don't appreciate the fact that they were saved out of the Holocaust, right? Their parents do, of course. They brought them to Israel, and these kids grow up with their friends and stuff, and they don't really, that's just somebody else's history, you know. They don't, it doesn't really mean anything until one day when they meet this old man or this old woman that was actually the one that defied the Nazis and rescued them, got them off the train, got them out of the factory, you know, the Schindler's List movie, and there's been many other stories and many other people. There's a whole wall of the righteous Gentiles in Jerusalem at the Yad Vashem Museum, the Holocaust Museum, that lists all these amazing people that took these risks to save Jewish moms and dads and children. And when these kids really understand what they have been rescued from, when they watch the video footage and they see what, the, what, what they were saved from, it just does something deep in them. And that's the same deep thing that needs to happen in you and me this morning. So I want to challenge you to write down three things that you are ashamed of that God has rescued and ransomed you from. Look back at behind your life, down your history, say, what are some things that just show my life was empty, it was meaningless, it was futile? Think about that. What are some things that you were really ashamed of and you're so thankful today that Jesus became your lamb and took your sins on his body so that you could be free? Write those down. That'll help you prepare for Easter. You know, I know I'm talking to some people this morning, probably to some that this is brand new. You've never really thought about this before. You've been looking for love in all the wrong places. You've been looking for meaning and purpose. You've been trying to find it in your own ability. It's just not happening. As my friend, or a friend of mine says, how's that working for you? But, you know, today, can you admit that really... You've been a slave. You've been captured. You were captured. You were a slave to the enemy and a slave to your own passions and desires. If you can do that today, that's really called confessing your sins. You can do that before the Lord right now. And He will not only forgive you, but He will wash you and give you the gift of His own righteousness. And you can begin a relationship walking with Jesus today. So I'm going to pray for you right now, okay? Lord Jesus, thank you so much that you were willing to come to this earth willingly because you valued us. We're going to talk about that next week, but how can we understand that? But you demonstrated your love to us by coming and taking our place, by dying on the cross, by becoming the Passover lamb for us so that we might have judgment pass over us. Lord, we thank you for rescuing us from the meaninglessness, the futility of an empty life. Now, this morning, Lord, for those of us, for those that I'm praying for right now that don't know you, I pray that right now they would say, Jesus, I need to know you. I need to be washed. I need to be cleansed from my sin, from my failure, from my betrayals, from all the stuff in which I look back and realize... I was driven, I was, I was in, the enemy was in control of my life. But Lord, I pray if there's anybody out there praying that prayer right now, Lord, that they can just say, Jesus, I receive you as my lamb. Come into my heart, wash me clean. I give my life to you. Become my lion who will fight for me. I just thank you for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. If that's you this morning that prayed that prayer, let me know. Because I want to be able to pray with you and connect with you and send some more things that will help you to get strong in your walk with God. 
But there's also a lot of you this morning that you just not been walking close to God. You kind of started out close to Him and then just kind of fell away, got distracted. The enemy has been offering you things, distracting you, calling you away from loving Jesus. And if that's you this morning, this is a, an amazing day for you to be able to give your life back to Him. To make Him Lord. To value what He did for you on the cross, the, the suffering and the blood that He spilled. You can do that right now. Would you pray with me? Lord, I pray for my friends that have not been walking close to you. And, and they're saying right now, you know what? I'm starting to fall back into that meaninglessness. That futility, that emptiness. I need to take a hold of what I was redeemed, who I was redeemed by. And realize again the precious blood, the, the incredibly high price that was paid for me. That God valued me and gave his son in my place. Jesus, I pray right now that each one of those that's, that's saying, yeah, that's me. That they would say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. I give my life back to you. Jesus, I receive again what you've done for me. Now, I don't want to abuse your grace, God. I don't want to um, treat you, treat what you did for me as, an, as a, a small thing. So Lord, I give you again my life. Jesus, come and be my lion again. I pray in Jesus' name. So I, and again, if you prayed that prayer, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So I believe that this message, if you've received it this morning, is really going to change your Easter. When you get to Resurrection Day, which is what I like to call Easter, because the word Easter actually comes from uh, pagan, uh, pagan goddess for Anglo-Saxons. But really the word is Pesach, which is the Passover word. And it's all about Resurrection Day. So I pray that when you hit that Easter Sunday, you will really, it will really mean something deep to you. And uh, I just want to encourage you, God has got so much for you. If you give your life to him and walk with him, you were created by him. Only he knows how to help you understand what life can really be. So next week I'm going to talk about the value that you have to God and the price that Jesus paid a little bit. And why it was worth it to him that he would do that for you and me. All right, have an awesome week. We'll be talking to you soon. We really appreciate those of you that have been sending in your, your offerings by mail or dropping them by. Thank you so much. We've got bills to pay still. Have an awesome afternoon.